my goodness, what happened to this poor Lyft driver? Hello, Wonder Hussy here, just doing a little off-roading through the middle of nowhere desert on a beautiful winter's day. You might be able to see there's snow on the spring mountains there behind me. All the Joshua trees are getting ready to put forth their little spring blossoms. Well, I'm actually on my way to go shoot a video at an undisclosed location, and I happened to pass by something that looked like it might be worthy of its own video. Now, you can see the road I've been driving on is pretty rough and sandy and, well, kind of soft in places. And, well, <laughs> I think that might be what happened here. Or, I should say, I think this soft, sandy wash might be what got the better of this abandoned car. Now, I'm going to go ahead and call this car abandoned for sure, because believe it or not, I actually happen to be driving down this same remote off-road route that really goes from nowhere to nowhere, because I do that kind of stuff, uh, about, gosh, a year and a half ago almost, and I'm pretty sure I saw this car there then. This thing has been sitting out here at least a year and a half, and frankly, I'm surprised that it's in as good of condition as it is. Anyway, let's take a look at the crime scene and see if we can figure out what happened. Okay, the first thing we should note in the course of our investigation is, well, I've been traveling along this off-road route here, which hasn't really been that rough, to be honest. Uh, bumpy and rocky in places, but nothing, well, <laughs> nothing my rig can't handle. That's because I have a lifted Toyota 4Runner with monstrous tires on it. This thing which is some kind of, looks like a Mitsubishi of some sort. Uh, it looks like it doesn't have much clearance at all, and it certainly isn't meant to be driven on these kinds of roads, especially not when the road crosses this wash here. Okay, I'm not sure if you can tell, but that's the road, and then it does cross this big, wide, natural, sandy wash before continuing on uh, farther that way. But we're standing right in the middle of this pretty big, pretty soft, I mean, it's loose sand, and well, you know, I don't know if this car just got stuck or what, because, well, it's pretty far off of the actual road. And now that I think about it, I don't know why it would be this far off of the road unless, well, unless somebody put it there on purpose, because it's not like they were just driving along. If they were just driving along the road and they got bogged down in the wash, well, then the car would be stuck right there, wouldn't it? No, it's way over here, and moreover, it's completely thrashed. I mean, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Well, first of all, you can see here part of one of the seats <laughs> laying in the desert. And you know, look how good of condition that upholstery is in. I mean, this definitely hasn't been sitting out in the desert for a year and a half. I mean, I'm pretty sure I saw, if not this car, then another car at this exact spot. Well, it would have been oct November. Oh yeah, I remember. I was on my way to my mom's for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I sound like Little Red Riding Hood. I was on my way to my grandma's house. No, I was on my way to my mom's for Thanksgiving, and I stopped off to meet my friend Larry to do some photos for my calendar. In the, f it was like, well, November 2020, 2020, November 2020. So it's been a year and two months since I drove by here and saw this car, and I don't think that upholstery. Looks like it's been laying out here for a year and two months. I don't know. I mean, you tell me. It's not like water damaged or really even sun-baked. Although, I guess they probably do upholster cars with some kind of extra strong, crazy, industrial, probably toxic fabric that can withstand anything. Uh, you know, the abuse of people spilling food and drinks on it. And well, I guess that might extend to the abuse of the hot desert sun baking on it for 14 months. Hmm. Anyway, here's the car. Uh, like I said, it's a little Mitsubishi. Uh, Mitsubishi Mirage, as a matter of fact. It's missing the M. <laughs> and it almost kind of looks like it's been stripped. I mean, both of the tail lights are missing. Uh, and they look like they've been removed, you know, not just smashed. I mean, because there's not, there's a little bit of broken 
glass and taillight material on the ground, but not enough that would indicate the entire thing was smashed. So I don't know why they took the taillights out. Let's see if they took the headlights. No, they left the headlights. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> the little light bulb. Oh my goodness. See, this doesn't look like it's been sitting out in the desert sun for a year and two months. So, gosh, maybe I saw a different car at this same place back then. Uh, maybe this is just a known spot where people like to abandon their cars. But I don't know why you would abandon a car like this in the first place, because it doesn't look like it's that old. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess you can't tell by just looking at the engine, but it doesn't look terribly busted or like there's anything obviously wrong with it. Looks like there is some kind of natural debris. Got all oh, this rat poo in there. Oh, well, hold everything. Maybe this has been out here for a while. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a lot of little rat turds down in there in the engine compartment. There's your problem, lady. You got rats in your engine. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe this thing has been out here for 14 months. Wow, wild. Uh, just like all the plastic parts look like they're in such good condition, but uh, I guess it's only been a year and two months. What's this? Gosh, all this glass is just completely shattered. I mean, completely shattered. I'm guessing the windshields probably. Oh, what windshield? <laughs> totally smashed out. Look at that. Yikes. I mean, on first glance, it kind of does look like an um, emergency type situation. Like, they got stuck in the sand. I mean, you can see where they did. Uh, the two front tires got buried in the sand, bumpers in the sand. I mean, I guess those tires might just keep spinning if they tried to back out or go. Obviously, they couldn't go any farther forwards. So it almost looks like they got stuck. They raised the trunk on the hood as like a distress indicator. Because isn't that what you're supposed to do if you get stuck or you run out of gas or your car breaks down or whatever in the middle of nowhere? I think you are supposed to lift the hood as a sort of signal to like any helicopter search and rescue flying overhead. Like, help, I'm in trouble. So... At first glance, to me, this does look like somebody got stuck in a jam and was, you know, trying to signal for help. But I don't think that's actually the case. I mean, if they were stuck, why would they have smashed all the, not just the windshield, but every single window in the car is smashed. Uh, like I said, the taillights are missing. Uh, looks like they pulled apart the dashboard here. Oh my goodness, why would, yeah, why would you do something like that if you were stuck waiting for help? I mean... It almost looks like somebody just came out here and busted this thing for fun. Which, <laughs> yikes, some fun. I mean, I suppose, objectively speaking, it would be fun to take a baseball bat to a car windshield. I've never done anything like that. I'm not a, well, I'm not a destroyer. I'm a builder. <laughs> but I can sort of see the, you know, let's be honest. We've all had those days when you just wanted to take a baseball bat to your friggin' computer monitor or your TV or, well, anyway enough about me but yeah it does sort of look like someone just willfully destroyed it for the fun of it i don't know why the gas tank would be open i mean what'd they do there dump sand in the gas tank just for funsies Ugh, god what a disaster so okay well let's look around and see if we can pick up any clues that might indicate huh, what was going on here before this car ended up stuck in this lonely wash Okay, well, one of the first things I actually noticed was if you look inside the car on the visor there, there's a lift sticker. Actually, let me go around to the other side. You'll be able to see it better. But yeah, you know, like if you take a, a ride share like Uber or Lyft, this is, had one of those lift stickers on it. So that means uh, whoever's car this was was driving for Lyft. Oh my goodness. What if somebody kidnapped their Lyft driver and brought him out here and killed them and busted up their car does that make sense hmm i can't imagine that a lift driver would even come way out here though in the first place i don't know maybe somebody was taking a lift well we're not that far ish from interstate 15 you know the main highway that goes from la to vegas so maybe somebody was i've heard of people taking uh, ride shares like all the way from well i think all the way from I once knew somebody who took a lift all the way from Vegas to Ridgecrest, so you could probably take one from Vegas to LA and, you know, it would just cost you a pretty penny, but the lift driver would probably be happy enough to do it. So maybe somebody called a lift, or excuse me, you don't call a lift, you go on your little app and put in a pickup at their place wherever in Vegas and, hey, I need to go to LA or I need to go to Barstow, whatever. 
and then maybe they held up the driver you know and forced him to come out here on this lonely back road and well oh my goodness okay before we get carried away uh there's a few other clues on the ground here okay what's this here's a a hoodie or a sweatshirt of some sort Ugh, i really don't want to touch this but i feel like it might be a clue let's see uncle sam original sportswear company huh so that really doesn't say much i could be from anywhere just some generic brand hoodie that well, presumably the poor lift driver might have been wearing and then look at this oh gosh cupcakes isn't that what that is oh my lord oh god i don't want to turn this over this can't have been sitting out here oh it's full of water <laughs> yikes for a year and two months you know what i mean like these things some animal would have gotten to them by then oh my goodness does this have a clue on it doesn't say where it was purchased from banana muffin oh man it's lunchtime too banana muffins sure would be good right now <laughs> maybe not those though gosh i wonder if well who would have had the muffins the lift driver oh no maybe the, that was like the lift driver's snack like they brought that along for their you know you gotta eat while you're driving around especially you're gonna go do a long trip like driving somebody all the way to barstow that might have been the lunch that they packed or maybe the lift driver's wife packed him or the lift driver's husband packed her that uh, those muffins as a lunch and then they just ended up face down in a wash in the middle of the desert full of rainwater terrible now well, look here here's the emblem that was on the back of the car the mitsubishi thing well, that would have been right here golly there really aren't too many clues as to what could have gone down here so i'm just gonna poke i mean there's just a lot of plastic debris little bits and pieces of the car all over the place i mean you can see over here over here it's almost like the car exploded or whoever was hitting it with a baseball bat just really went to town and knocked stuff every which way oh my golly is this something out of the engine compartment holy moly it's interesting because this stuff is all plastic you think it would degrade so quickly you know like i'm used to finding these busted old cars from the classic age of detroit automobiles and all that stuff was made out of steel so those kinds of things you expect to be sitting around in the desert for <laughs> decades after they were abandoned this not so much what's this oh alcohol prep pads oh so like uh, for sterilizing stuff uh-oh i wonder if this has anything to do with the crime scene like maybe oh, gosh maybe they had to stop because the passenger said he was injured and he needed to clean himself and pull over here and <laughs> ended up way back here gosh your theory is as good as mine this is freaky oh look here's a clue too an old mask like you wear when you have to go in the grocery store you know because of covid well that mask effectively dates this wreckage to the post-covid era because hardly anyone rolled around with those kinds of masks in their cars before like april 2020 so that does fit in with my timeline though i saw i'm pretty sure i saw this car here in november 2020 so they would have been carrying a mask around with them at that time and then what's this oh ponies it looks like it was ponytail holders Oh, so like a woman would have had that. Or I suppose it could have been a long-haired man, but that just kind of seems like something a woman would use, a bunch of ponytail holders. So there was a woman involved in this scenario somehow. Well, maybe they got, maybe it was a woman who lured this Lyft driver way out onto this lonely desert road and then bashed his car all to smithereens and stole two of his banana muffins. Golly, any clues in here? Oh, there's another mask laying on the floor. So definitely a post-covid relic oh well, here's the rearview mirror sitting on the friggin' passenger side floor nothing in the glove box but there is a lot of debris accumulated in the bottom of the glove box so that does sort of indicate it's been here for a while but i don't know the rest of the interior seems relatively clean for sitting out in the desert for a year and a half oh look there's stuff in the back let's see what's in the back what's back here oh there's a rock star energy drink uh, a light bulb package. Uh, oh, is this a receipt from Walgreens? Let's see what this is. Ugh, it's all bleached out. You can't even see what it is anymore. Whatever it was, it was $24.95. Mm, but you can't read what it was. You can't read the date or where it was. Gosh. Oh, wait, you can. Look. Oh, yeah, look. Oh, my goodness. It says September 6, 2020. <gasps> 12.20 p.m. Wow, so this fits in with our timeline, okay? So the last 
date that we can establish that somebody was <laughs> doing business in this car was September 9th, 2020. Or September 6, 2020. You remember what you were doing on September 6, 2020? Mm, I think I was at a hot spring in the Eastern Sierra, personally. <laughs> or just getting ready to leave it. Wow, that's like right around Labor Day. So Labor Day 2020, somebody went to Walgreens, and I can't make out where, and I can't make out what, but <laughs> they bought something. And that's just about two months, two and a half months before I remembered seeing this car, so that totally fits in with the timeline. Okay, let's see what else is back here. Well, this looks like it's, oh God, I hesitate to even touch this stuff. This looks like it's the, the back window, which, let me pan up. Back window is totally smashed out too. So this was the back window. It looks like there was a little, Looks like a Batman decal was on the back window. Oh look, another lift sticker. Oh my goodness, what happened to this poor lift driver? This is horrible. What's this? CHP? Why would you have a CHP that's the California Highway Patrol sticker? Oh, it almost looks like it was, it's a, a warning. Like they stuck this citation to the back of the, the back window. Oh look, here's part of it too. Oh my goodness, it's like a puzzle. Vehicle check parking warning highway damage report. But it's not filled out. Damage report point. Boy, I'll say. Man, this is wild. The whole thing is just totally smashed. Okay, so they had some kind of t highway patrol ticket on the windshield. They had a Batman decal, and they were pretty obviously a Lyft driver. Golly, I'm starting to wonder if I shouldn't... <laughs> send all this footage to the police. I mean, I can't imagine the police don't know about this. We're not that remote. Like I said, Interstate 15 is only about mm, 15 miles that way. But then again, we are in an extremely remote and weird part of the desert where not a lot of people drive through. There's other roads in this area that most people take. But still, don't they like fly overhead occasionally? And like you would see this car shining in the sun and surely in the 14 months since I first noticed this, like some official authority would have seen it. Golly, I sure hope this poor innocent Lyft driver, or maybe the Lyft driver was the aggressor, who knows, whatever the case, I just hope everybody associated with this mess is okay. Cause this would be a really terrifying place to get into a dangerous situation and or an altercation. I mean, like I said, we're in the middle of nowhere. It's one of those places where no one can hear you scream uh, no towns around, really, any direction. Uh, I, but you know what? I think there's cell phone signal here. Let me check. Hold on. Yeah, I just checked and I have full 5G on my cell phone. So, I mean, I'm puzzled. Let's do, uh, one more pan around the car. See if we missed anything. Uh oh, <gasps> personal executive training. I just found a business card belonging to somebody. And I don't know if this person has anything to do with this situation or if their card just ended up in the car. So I'm not going to say, but it's an address from Las Vegas, uh, the Southwest part of Las Vegas. It's a personal trainer, a guy. So mm, I don't know if that's a clue. Look at this. Antibiotic ointment. Oh, that kind of goes with those antiseptic wipes. And then what's this dark ice? I've never... Processed by people with disabilities. What is this? Spritz it. Spray into carpet under seat. Do not spray on plastic or vinyl surfaces. Fragrance and methyl alcohol. Oh, okay. So what is it? Some kind of like air freshener for the car? Ugh. Oh my goodness. Well, I hope that personal trainer wasn't moonlighting as a Lyft driver. You know, in this gig economy, a lot of people do multiple jobs. So maybe he was doing personal training sessions and driving for Lyft on the side trying to save up for his wedding, trying to save up for a big trip, trying to pay off his college tuition, who knows? And then, yeah, I took a bad fare and well, ended up out here. But then that doesn't really make sense either because why would somebody <laughs> make a Lyft driver come all the way out here just, unless it was like a, a sadistic act, like they wanted to, well, do something sexually sadistic out here where no one could hear him scream. But then how is the passenger supposed to get back into civilization? You know what I mean? Why would they... Unless they had, like, somebody else meet them out here. <laughs> this, I don't know what to make of this whole situation. Would a personal trainer or fitness trainer be eating banana muffins? 
mean, it's not exactly a health food. I mean, even if somebody just wanted the insurance money for this car, well, wouldn't they at least light it on fire or do something? Like, it's parked in a pretty obvious place, not that far from civilization. I mean, to be honest, there is kind of a, a really small little town, 2,000 people, less than 10 miles that way. So if you're trying to abandon a car in the middle of nowhere and, like, make it disappear forever... Uh, you could do a lot better than this. Oh, one other thing I just noticed. Is this a bullet hole in the door? Or I don't know. Maybe that's not a bullet hole. It's kind of big. For, it'd be a huge bullet. But yeah, something definitely punctured the door. I mean, the the body of the car doesn't look damaged. Like, the frame looks okay, so it's not like it rolled over. Although, now that I look at it, the roof of the car is pretty dented up. So, maybe this thing was laying on its roof at one time. That's pretty dented. You know what I mean? Maybe this thing did roll. Back, yeah, there's a dent in the back too. Oh, look, and then there's more, well, what you might call bullet holes, or you might call, well, that bottom one does look like a bullet hole. Yikers! Oh, look, I recognize this from a, some kind of sticker. Isn't that like a sports team or something? The feet of some sports team's mascot? God, look at the front tire on this side. It's totally buried in the sand. That's pretty scary. Okay, now, before you think I'm callous and cold-blooded for making a video about what could be potentially somebody's personal disaster, again, I don't think anything bad happened out here because the, whoever left this car here, whoever did this, really made minimal attempts, if any, to keep anybody from finding it. So it's almost like they wanted to be seen, they wanted to be discovered. I mean, there's all kind of tire tracks in the sand around here. Off-roaders come through here all the time. I bet everybody and their Aunt Sally knows about this old wrecked car and it's no big deal at all. Uh, it's probably just too big of a hassle for the county or whoever to get a tow truck all the way out here and drag it away. So they're just leaving it here to rust away in the fine tradition of old desert cars. <laughs> but I do have to say, <laughs> this is the first Mitsubishi Mirage <laughs> I've ever well, that I've ever seen busted and rusting away in the desert, and that I've ever made an entire video about. Anyway, I hope anybody who was involved with this incident is okay. I'm just gonna get back in my car and keep on rolling. And I'm gonna be doubly glad that I have four-wheel drive, a lift, and beefy tires, because I sure wouldn't want to be stuck in this jam.